Um, the Asian Avengers. So weak. The, Asian, the Asian Avengers. <laughs> so weak. So, so fuckable, bro. You know? Whoa. Whoa. There's five Asian guys together. Got wow. Together. Did you ever um, go through a stealing phase? Do I think everyone should have a gun? Maybe. Or you can look me up. I don't care. I'll fight you. I don't care. You want to get high as fuck? Well? You like opium? And welcome back to another episode of Asian Not Asian Podcast, the podcast where two Asian yeah, yeah, guys yeah. now from Asia talk about American issues no American cares about. I'm your host, Fumi Abe. And I'm Mike Nguyen. Today is July 5th. July so 5th. Happy Independence Day. Yes. I'm sure you guys didn't do... I, I'm sure no one did anything. Did anyone do anything fun? Did you do anything I, fun? I, I actually... You know what? I had a little barbecue, me and Gina, and then we walked around. There was people out and there was like so much fucking fireworks that it felt like you were inside of the fireworks show it, it you know what i'm saying it was like <laughs> it was like a vr experience where you're like flying through the 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 thing and and you just had no idea where it was it was just like it'd be right in front of you someone setting an off and uh, setting off an m80 and then someone doing roman candles like uh, over you know just around the corner and shit and it was like it was it was pretty crazy i feel you know i don't you know the okay my, here's my thing with fireworks i i grew up doing a lot of fireworks stuff because in japan they just sell them at the 7-eleven and like oh really my uncle would take us to the beach and we would like use them at the beach sure it had some fireworks that like went up in the air and stuff but they're mainly like the handheld ones or like they look pretty they're like fun to look at these fireworks that are going off in our neighborhoods they're like bombs like (laughs) there's nothing there's nothing cute about it you know the way you write fireworks in the chinese characters is it's fire flower because it's supposed oh. to be like a, it's, it's supposed to be beautiful, like a flower. Okay, Th- this is like some Iraq shit. Like, there's nothing cute <laughs> about it. There's nothing beautiful about it. And I, I really, I, I feel that like Americans like really misinterpreted like the word of fireworks. It's really not. It's really <laughs> no, not what it was supposed to be. They're very, they're very powerful. The one that really every most of them are pretty good. The one that you're talking about, I think, is the M80 because like what happens there is that the launcher itself explodes. And that thing kicks super hard, and it's like on the ground level, so it just like hits you in the in the chest. Mm. And then, and then once that, because that's just to get it up into the sky. So there's two explosions. There's that one. It goes up into the air, and then it explodes again. It's kind of like one of those like uh, landmines. I know I know a lot about landmines. So like there's <laughs> shouts shout to Vietnam. Shouts to <laughs> Vietnam. We you know you know bouncing Betty's. You know they they spring up and they get up to about chest height. Then they blow up. Okay, so that's what that's what what it is. But yeah, it's it's getting crazy. I thought I thought also I thought fireworks were ex- expensive. I, I, apparently not. They're <laughs> apparently they're super cheap because like all my neighbors have like hundreds of dollars worth of fireworks and they all lit them all at once yesterday. So yeah. it was uh, it was pretty intense, man. But uh, um, we um you know it was it was a good fourth. Uh, you had a good fourth. You I did, did something Actually, special. I did so- I did something very special. And I don't even you know I I, I will go ahead and talk about it, but. Please know if there are any comedians listening. I know that there's like this whole thing right now where like if you do this thing that I'm about to tell you that I did, people throw shade at you. Really? Because, okay. Because because they think you're not obeying the rules. Uh, but I'm just gonna talk about it, and I, I want you to know that I, I wore a mask during it, and also a condom for whatever reason. <laughs> but I did, I did a, uh, I I did like my first in person stand up comedy live show. Live show, right. Live show in Astoria, Queens. I went I took like it was like a ninety minute commute just to do eight. So minutes. far away from us, yeah. So fucking far away. And they have an outdoor setup. It's it's actually very good. And we're just speaking into like a guitar amp kind of thing. Um, Got it. felt like a very indie vibe. There are about fifteen people and bro, I gotta say it felt so good. Like yeah. I We've been doing Zoom shows. We've all been doing Zoom shows. And I think some of us were like, you know what? Maybe we just need to evolve. Like, stand up is whatever, you know? And I, I'm not going to lie. I felt that way for a little bit. I was like, maybe we just need to evolve. And I'm all for evolving. Um, but the second I got on, it took a minute for my body to, like, figure out what I was doing. It's kind of like being a drug addict, you know? Like, you don't do heroin <laughs> for a while. And you do it again, your bro- and your body's like, oh, yeah, this is heroin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on in. What, you know? what an analogy. Okay, <laughs> like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> but then, like, my body, like, locked in. Locked and then, in. And then I was like, I was like, oh, I fucking remember how to do this. And then it oh, was, like, shit. so much fun. And, and that's what I kind of, this is going to sound kind of corny, but I remember, like, this is the, I remember the reason why. You know, all comedians know that we could just be like TikTok hot girls and make money and get sponsorships, right? We could all be Twitter. <laughs> we could spend all of our mo- okay, We could all ahead. spend our time being Twitter Making people. That, or, doing that, right? yeah. 
making hack ass shit. Dude, we're fucking all Asian here. We could make videos about rice constantly and go viral oh, on Instagram. Oh my god, I love Easily it. Easily go viral. Get sponsored by Zojirushi. Get you know, whatever <laughs> whatever, right? But we choose not to, and I remembered why we don't do it when I was doing it yesterday. I was like, Oh, this is why we don't do it because True. even though even though we know this is worth nothing, it still feels it's like the best blowjob you ever get in your life, and no other no other woman can blow your dick like stand up comedy. That's all you I'm guys trying heard. To say, you you know? guys heard it here first, okay? Stand up comedy, it's like it's like heroin, <laughs> and it's also like blowjobs. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know what shows you're going to, Fumi. Okay, mine. Yeah, it's it's a very rough hand job at best. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> but listen, uh, I I want to talk more about it, but I want to bring our guest into it because yes. I feel that we've hold him, we've uh, kept him from this blowjob conversation, and I can tell that he's a fan of the blowjob and maybe heroin as well so let, let's let's bring him into it and uh I, i'm so happy to have him on he was actually recommended to us uh from one of our favorite guests julia shiplet dude a long time ago she recommended yeah. us to him and we just said no thanks for like six <laughs> months <laughs> we, were, we, we were like we were yeah we 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 were immediately threatened we were like nope yeah. i'm scared no i'm scared of him I'm, a, like, I'm intimidated. Yeah, or like another straight Asian guy? No, 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 no. That's the thing. That's the thing is that when you when you bring someone onto your show, uh, sometimes what you can do is you can look them up on the internet, right? You, you know, we all have like tapes and stuff, and you know, a lot of times these com a lot of co a lot of comics like you know they, if they've just started doing it, they don't have like really crisp tapes or they're not that good. But the worst thing is when you when you get recommended someone and they have an awesome tape. Yeah, and they're you're good. Like, and you're like, oh shit. Shit. Oh, <laughs> this guy's good. Maybe I can put him up last. Oh, oh my god! That's what happened yeah. in this situation, That's, man. Yeah, he he was too good to be on the show, but we we we've, <laughs> we've caught up. We've caught up. We've caught up. We we've leveled up during the quarantine. We've tried. So, uh, yeah, man, this guy uh, he's a he's a stand up comedy uh, comedian from Seattle originally, now all over New York. And uh, listen, I'm sure he's done a bunch of cool shit, but I, I didn't look it up. But I'll just let I'll just let him tell you what he's did, what he's done. So let's get excited for the hilarious wilfred padua everybody uh thanks you guys woo, woo, woo. you know i what are you what are your credits by the way yeah. uh i just <laughs> yeah actually yeah. <laughs> i just what went to boston credits? comedy festival that's my biggest one. oh Did that's you? right yeah uh, I won. Oh I won the last one ever. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, you did. Um, that's my biggest one. I don't know. I've done festivals. Nothing big. Nothing like you guys. No, dude. Yeah, I, I mean, big. let me tell you. I, I've done Boston Comedy Festival, and I got eliminated in the first round, and I came back to New York crying. <laughs> and, it's and such that's the, that's, a waste of it, money, honestly. It's. It, I, I did it in front of like old white Boston e white people. Like it was just. So, this is like 2016. Like yeah. I wasn't that good, but still, it was like brutal and somebody had somebody had seen me in new york and was like are you ever gonna be in boston and i was like yeah i'm gonna do this festival oh, no. they oh, came no. and they saw me eat shit and they wouldn't even say bye to me oh, <laughs> it was like so one. embarrassing I, yes, but, but, he, but he won that one i actually was wondering How? why i wasn't on uh your podcast earlier because <laughs> 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 it was it like two or three episodes ago you had natalie ocker on there who's a good friend of mine but i'm like yeah she's not asian what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> i'm friends with these guys now <laughs> um yeah man we, we you know i it, it's it's the it's I, it's you know you you were close to our vibe you know so we were we were school we i remember when you first showed up in new york when did you get here when did you get to new york uh i'm almost two i'm gonna be two years in in september yeah. So right. Yeah. So then, when you had gotten here, well, uh, I think I think Fumi told me about you first. He's like, "Oh, there's this new guy for you know, he's from Seattle," and it's it's so funny how like comedy is like a high school, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, there's a new kid, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? And sometimes that new kid is like a hot hot guy, you know? It's like, oh, I I heard he's a bad boy, woo, you know? Oh, he's done this festival, you know? Blah, blah, blah. he's done Bridgetown, whatever the fuck it is, and it's like, oh, you know? And then like. You're like kind of like scoping him out. You're on you're on his Instagram. I was on your Instagram. You know, I was scoping. It was like, yeah. I was like, what's what's good with this guy? You know, so no. Well, everyone told me like my first because I don't think I met you guys until like I was a, a year. Yeah, it's in. been yeah. It was a while. Which, it was a I, while. Don't, and, I don't know how that was possible. Well, here's yeah. how. It's because okay. we, we're all booked on different shows. They're not going to book two Asians on the same show. When they're <laughs> not going to book two Asians <laughs> on the same can't show meet. and waste <laughs> diversity like that. Like yeah, uh, I, I, they only need a certain number of diversity points right we're gonna save we're gonna save will for next week yeah. okay and we're gonna have fumi on the week after that you know and so. then mike after that it's like, and then mike after that yeah you know no, no need to blow our load
hello too early. <laughs> well, I think we've only like I've only been on like what two shows with both of you guys. Like, uh, yeah, and, if and that. They're, us three shows have that never I, been in the same room except for at your. We've never show. been in the same room. <laughs> I think together. I think they're all they're all shows that like we've booked you on. Like we had to force the situation. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, if, if it's like another show that booked uh, like me and Mike or me and Fumi, that's like a poorly yeah, booked good. show. Like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> poorly booked. Because they're they're that's, not thinking about how to yeah, conserve their Asians through the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a really sad. Uh, you know, like those like fairy tales were about like a like a king and a and a queen who can't meet because they're separated by a river, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's like yeah, ancient yeah, China. Yeah. It's like that, but with Asian comedians. Like, but their their last names are both Wang, and they couldn't meet at the show because the white booker <laughs> wouldn't book them on the same show. <laughs> so we had to keep leaving like notes for each other, like under yeah, rocks yeah, and yeah, shit, yeah. Yeah. or yeah. transform it to I had to transform it to a fox so I could visit you, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I had to grow long blonde hair to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, oh, Will, we're so glad you're on the show. Uh, how's your how's your how's your quarantine treating you, man? I mean, it was it's been dope. I love it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah, I mean, uh, unemployment is dope. I get what Republicans are complaining about because uh, I'm gonna be that guy, <laughs> that welfare queen. <laughs> the welfare queen. Yeah, l- let me live off this shit forever. Um, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, it's been dope. I don't know. I haven't. I miss stand up uh, a lot. I'm envious of you getting to do live stand-up for me um, yeah man have you have you um do you have any plans to do any live stuff anytime I, soon? i just got booked for a weekend in seattle in august and Ooh, i okay, don't know this if is i great. can take that why when is it when is it when is august it? august 21st and 22nd so if you have any uh seattle asians out there uh yeah check me we got out, some but, seattle anals. definitely definitely do uh, what do you mean you can't uh, okay. take it though i just know yeah. it's in a club you know, it's indoors, and and you gotta fly. Ooh, and I the, assume you're flying. Yeah, I'm, I'm flying, and I'm not as worried about flying, but it's just like oh really? Okay. Gathering people because like there is a lot of shade being thrown at people who are doing live stand up right now. And I yeah. know we, we took a picture yesterday, and we're like we like debated on posting it or not, and I was yeah. like oh I didn't even know it was that bad. Like you know, I mean I did it, and I you know it's fine. If you want to come at me, you can come at me. I think I it's a lot of fun because you guys did, you did it outdoors. Mine's gonna be indoors yeah. in a club, like you know. I don't, I don't know how it's gonna be handled. If it's like the club's gonna enforce masks or anything. Right, right, right. That's what I was. Um. So, so part of the experience yesterday in the story, what I was really um sort of proud of, I guess, is you know we all got our individual microphones. So we walk in and they give us like seven different microphones. We got to choose our own. We cleaned it. And so the host, you know, we didn't, we weren't sharing microphones because that's probably the most like unsanitary thing ever, right? So we'd have to unplug the cable every time the comedian switched and stuff like that. They weren't taking temperatures, but they, it was outside. Everybody was kind of spread, you know, like six feet or whatever it is. So from a logistic perspective, it wasn't like the best thing for laughter, but you could still see people's faces live. And that shit got me hard, bro. Really? <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> wow. It, you Hold on, you just forget. Faces. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you just like, it, it also like, you know, everybody's trying to do new stuff as I did too. What was interesting for me was like, I wonder how many how many of this Zoom shit that we've been working on translates to real life, right? Yeah. Because we've been doing a lot of Zoom shows, yeah. right? Yeah, go ahead. So, so yeah. So did you do, because like, I would say I probably have like four or five, you know, cor- quarantine jokes now right that like they, they they work okay in zoom shows are fine you know as as much as a show a joke can work on a zoom show did did you try to bring some of those jokes into the set that you did live and if yeah, so like so, how'd they go so I, I made sure i like close strong so my last joke was like an old, old bit i have a, like insecure or whatever but i did a lot of the the new corona stuff that i've been writing and there was one joke that i had been doing pretty well on zoom but it was like eh in real life, yeah. and I and I and I thought about and I thought about Mike. You know, you were you were saying that this doing comedy on Zoom is like being on a treadmill uh, in space, right? Yeah, you're, you're just doing the bare minimum. So you're when you come back on, to have so a when you come back to tone. Earth, you yes. can like walk, right? Yeah, that's what it was. It's like they're not. It's not that they're not funny at all, but it's just like you didn't train them as well as you trained your other bits that you worked on for real bits so like you you feel the the muscle atrophy like it's really interesting like is the rhythm of your jokes like the ones that you wrote for zoom are they different than like the rhythm of your jokes that are live i think the the main difference is like 
my problem with Zoom shows or Zoom comedy is uh, you have a funny idea, but I have a hard time like working on it. Yeah. You know, because I, I can't do it that many times. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because I, I don't have a Zoom show every day. And also I have one once a week, but they're the same people. So I'm not going to yeah. keep doing it. Right. So I, so I, the idea is funny, but I, I, I just can't really work on it. So it ends kind of quickly um but that said like you know a couple of the things i said like bombed and that was fun too yeah just to be like yeah ah yeah it was it's, it's funny because um it's outside so when you bomb all you hear are like nice birds <laughs> yeah just birds <laughs> <laughs> so it's like kind of nice <laughs> what i would love is, is is if we do a show in brooklyn and then you bomb and then a fireworks goes off just to, yeah. uh, just like yeah uh, just me boom yeah <laughs> Dude, you guys should, that guy knows. Yeah, you should do that. Uh, like, there's that amphitheater that's not far from us. Uh, yes, at the park. And, at, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. You should do like a, a, a fireworks slash comedy show. Uh, <laughs> fireworks comedy. <laughs> Yo, that's a good no, idea. Nobody's doing that. Yo, no. we combined the two loves of the neighborhood, okay? We're like, yeah, if, if you do well, great, you get laughs. If you do bad, we fire off some fireworks. <laughs> at you. It's like the it's like the gong yeah yeah it's like the yeah. gong show, the gong show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah. that's yo, amazing yo. You get a but Roman, there was like we give the entire audience Roman candles <laughs> <laughs> they just aim it at you are you doing well Fuck no you. duck yeah so okay some, some other things I noticed that were funny is uh, I, I missed the sound of crowd work do you guys remember yeah, crowd, crowd work yeah crowd work baby I, I, cause there was a host and she was like what do you guys do you guys work and like that awkward interaction, I was like, ah, like this, this used to be my life. I yeah. forgot that. Also, the funniest thing I saw was not going to mention this person's name, but there were like comics hanging. Like that's, hanging that's a thing again. Yeah. So hanging used to be a thing. Like, comedians would go to shows and just hang in the back just to like show face to see if, the, if you get booked again. I thought that that art had disappeared with, with Corona, but like there were like three comedians hanging out trying to get stage time. One actually wow. got on. So, yeah, I mean, people are fucking thirsty for stage time. And I, I realize that, like, you know, there's a lot of there's a decent amount of outdoor shows popping up right now. And, like, we're not really booked on any of them. But, like, I, I realized that I was, like, fairly fortunate to do even one. You know, like, I think a lot of people are not even going to get to do one. Well, you have, Wilfred, you haven't done any live shows since you got to New York. I mean, since the quarantine started for you. Yeah, since I got into New York, I've gotten booked on. And then <laughs> is it is it is it okay in Seattle? Like, is it, is it open in Seattle and they can have like shows and everything? I think it it opened up, but I think the it's just like everywhere else in the country, uh, it's still opened up a little too soon. Like their numbers are right. going up over there, um, but their numbers just started going up like within the last week or two. Um, so got I it. don't know. We'll see if that shit gets canceled. It's in August, so. Are yeah, you? Are, I feel so you're like kind of you're like uh, so you're like morally opposed to it, not necessarily for your own safety, but you just. Think I don't know if I am because I like, I'm not. You have no morals. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I, I'll do anything. Uh, right. <laughs> I'll tap dance for a Nazi commercial if you need me. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that's that's uh, too specific to be made up. I think you actually yeah, did. That. Exactly. Oh, yeah. You did yeah. get you got that booked, didn't you? Got, when I've is got, that coming out? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we don't need to know. <laughs> um, but it's, yeah, I, there's a part of me, it's like, it's, they're going to book someone anyways. So I, at least like, I'm just the com, I'm just, I don't know, an instrument in this problem, I guess. But, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you're just following mm -hmm. orders, you know, You're right, right. <laughs> but I don't know. It's like, there also needs to be levity, but I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm really torn right now. I don't know how to feel about it. What do you guys think about, um, you know, th this is interesting because you're clearly like torn about it. And I, I feel that I would be on the same page, but so like Mark Norman um, has been releasing a lot of... He's a, he's a very famous comedian. Mm -hmm. uh, he's all over YouTube. He has been doing a lot of tours outside New York and, like, filming it, making little mini doc series, and he just released, like, a little mini special that he did in Dallas, and he's just doing, like, a bunch of new jokes or whatever. You look at these comedy clubs, it's exactly what Wilford just described. They're just... They say that it's 30% capacity. It does not look like 30% to me. Like, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty fucking packed. Nobody's wearing masks. The waitresses are, but the customers are not... The comedians are not. Afterwards, they're all getting together, hugging, taking pictures. And there was a part of me that saw that. And I, you know, obviously as a comedian, I'm like, that's so cool. But as like a person, <laughs> like a, just an <laughs> a American citizen, I was like, I don't know that I like this. Like, it's just too, mm -hmm. it's too aggressive. You know, I don't, I don't know what you, I don't know. Like, I don't know if you have seen that. And if you have, like, what, what's your, like, sort of your initial reaction or what's your gut reaction to somebody doing something like that? 
I mean, so the way that I felt about this like last month was different because like the the numbers weren't spiking as high as like now it's higher than ever. And I'm yeah. like, OK, well, I guess it's not so bad in Houston or whatever. And then like Texas is getting the highest numbers ever. Uh, I just like now I don't know how to feel about it because it's now I don't know, like it, it makes it also looks like I'm on the wrong side of history if I go and do this. Mm. You no, know, like, mm. and we got to keep pretending to be woke uh, as comedian. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, Fair I don't know. I have to at least like act woke. And even if my words aren't that way, but like, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. It's different now. Like things, everything's changing so quickly. Like I took this booking and I was like, yeah, it's whatever. And then, but now I'm like, what do I, the numbers are going up and it's just encouraging people to do to be out and live their normal lives but that's not how things should be happening i i I understand i i used to be a lot more kind of militant about like hey let's all like stay home and all that stuff but like after like it's it's been like a long time and i and especially with the summer i think it's grinding on a lot of people you know so i don't i don't blame you if you if you go you know i i totally get it and and you know the way that fumi talks about stand-up comedy i should try this thing it's it sounds really good like i I should do it i've i've heard about it before so yeah mike you remember when i saw you on the street when we were walking uh yeah and (laughs) there's this moment where i because i was just like oh my god that's mike i got excited and i i stepped like (laughs) too close to you and i saw you step back (laughs) (laughs) and i was like like, you know what i was like you know what don't let that phase you that says nothing no reflection on your friendship (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's add add two more weeks onto your podcast date that's what that is (laughs) yeah yeah exactly we delays your booking by two weeks he texted me he texted me he's like yo he got he got too close we can't have him on the pod that was too (laughs) uh dude i I, I will say that like okay so I was at this bar in my neighborhood it was called it's called Covenhoven it's like a little bar they got a backyard space letting people oh, in nice. and I was having a drink with an old friend of mine it was really fun but we were both talking about this you know we're trying to be social in a time where we're not allowed to be social right and there were some like cute girls around but we're just like the, the thought of even trying to talk to other people right now making new friends doesn't even cross our minds yeah. like like you mm. can't make f- new friends right now so if you like this if you had just moved to new york or something like that because i know a lot of comedians that just moved to new york and corona hit like you you can't make friends so like you probably don't have anyone to hang out with and i was just thinking about like wow if you don't have like a community here right now it must be super fucking yeah lonely you know yeah i actually i asked a, a girl out on hinge uh and she stopped responding to me i was like damn i should have waited six months like <laughs> <laughs> Cause but like, see, you you get judged for even asking somebody out. Yeah. Because at proposing to meet. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I just don't know, I I don't know how to like properly socialize and like act in in this new world. The rules are different, and we, I haven't yeah. adjusted well. That's such a good point, uh, Fumi, about how we haven't really met a lot of other people. Like I feel in the comedy world, like you you meet new people all the time. Right. There's like new comics coming yeah. in, new people moving into the scene or whatever. And that's true. Like, I feel like, I mean, you just look at our sort of our guest list for the, since the quarantine. It's all obviously people we've known, uh, people we like and also Wilfred. And it's like, <laughs> we just, it's just like we haven't brought a lot of people, you know, like these are all people we already know. And we've made a couple. I met a couple of people, met them on a Zoom show, which is like kind of weird, you know, like. You're like you have to like mess Facebook message each other. That's not really like meeting them. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's it's true. I feel like we've all kind of like everyone you knew and everyone you were cool with. Uh, those relationships all froze. We all froze and we're not like making new connections. You know, we're all just kind of like, OK, we got what we got. Everybody just just this is it. You know, I will now, say I know? feel like I'm getting deeper connections because there's a you know, uh, That's true. my circle has gotten smaller. And like we've got a lot of time to like reach out to each other. So yeah. It's like uh you know, like even you and me, Mike, we, we've been texting. Uh, it's just like, oh, yeah. We have. You know, it's, nice <laughs> we to, have. it's nice to like catch up with my boy uh, and just my like, boy, whoa. you know, <laughs> it's like, like that. That is we're no longer just co-workers, you know. Yes. We're actually yes. friends who reach out and check in on each other. And um, and that's also like that's something that's very, you know, it seems pretty rare with just men in general. That's very like, true. Hey, how are you doing uh, with no like 
let me get on that show or whatever you know there's no ulterior motive <laughs> oh go. shit you're let right me let yeah. Me, let me, yeah i mean i got into this game to make friends with filipino men okay so <laughs> I'm, I'm here i'm doing it yeah um wilfred i wanted to talk just a little bit too because so you're from you're from seattle originally is that like yeah, your yeah. i don't know home base i guess um and then you moved out here uh, how long have you been doing comedy in seattle for um i'm uh at nine and a half years now Mm, mm, mm. did you get started to write in co- like in college or right after college or like start, what kind of got you into that you know i started at 24 and I, I started because i was doing like improv for a long time because i you know i always wanted to do stand-up and i thought it was the same mm. thing and it's very not and then uh, yeah 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 <laughs> and then i got into grad school in chicago and i was like oh i should finally do stand-up and have this trick up my sleeve that's what i that's how little respect i had for this art is that <laughs> just like oh i'll just trick up my sleeve just have oh, this hey, check this out. other trick up my sleeve so i can you know uh be like this multifaceted comedy guy and then uh, yeah, yeah yeah and then once i that was like six months before i moved and then i you know moved to chicago i was like you know fuck improv uh like stand-up's way cooler <laughs> way more fun uh and i understand the trajectory and like had it not had to like get better in terms of like developing a fan base and getting famous or whatever but I, but i know how to get better as a comedian um, right so i just kept working at it it's the only thing i've ever done in my life where i've like i got good at it i plateaued and i continued to work to get through that yes 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 because mm. usually a lot of times once you hit that plateau because it's exciting when you when you're feeling yourself getting better and then when you hit that plateau then you're just sort of like what's the point like i'm not getting any better nothing's happening yeah. but i'm still like spending all this energy and time cultivating it you know and and you're just like you kind of lose heart wait so you have a graduate degree too yeah what, what was your grad major what the hell uh, i like I how that i'm interested <laughs> in that hold on go back yeah, to the too. graduate degree uh, you go to booth what the hell i have an mfa in writing uh but it's just it's Whoa, stupid look at you. it's dumb you, i should have just been doing stand-up i should have like uh that's cool though wow you really are like all kinds of uh of of different failures all mixed together <laughs> <laughs> One thing I we I want to talk to you about was, uh, you know, we were out in Seattle, and from what I've heard, it's a good scene. It's like you know, it's 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 a thriving scene. But then you came to New York, and you were you were like, oh, this is like a different thing. This is like a whole other kind of game. And you were saying like how people here kind of take it more seriously and are just really you know passionate about it. I mean, like t- talk to me a little bit about the differences between Seattle and New York because I want to talk about how. Uh, you know new york is sort of was the mecca for comedy but now with everything sort of changing i want to get into that but first i want to understand like the difference between seattle and new york as far as like the scene goes well we talked about this a little bit like when we were just hanging uh us three were talking about this when we were hanging out before uh your hack city show last week and uh Mm. i mean a lot of like new york is about comedy like uh the the stand-up scene is just like what's funny and there's no like Sure, there are people that throw in shade for like saying something that like may might be like slightly offensive, but it, in New York, it's like okay, how do how do I just get funnier? In Seattle, there's just like there the city was like celebrating a lot of like uh, identity politics comedy, like I, and you had to be like on the right side of history to have like the through what you're saying on stage, you had to be on the right side of history to like be uh, championed by the city and. Like you guys know what I say on stage. It's yeah. not. It's not that I yeah. play with that a lot. Um, they didn't like your. They didn't like your. They didn't like your Nazi tap dancing. Game. Yeah. yeah, yeah Nazi no. Tap they would not have loved that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's like you have to play like to the politics of the city in Seattle, uh, and mm. I just wasn't that guy. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to a place where I think that where there's comedy that I that is being created that I respect. Yeah, yeah. You heard it here. He likes Nazi Nazi tap dancing jokes, okay? That's mm-hmm. the jokes he respects. I like that. <laughs> so, what about um so I mean, here's the thing though, and this I think ties into what Fumi did this weekend with his, you know, his first show, you know, a lot of people come here. This is like the Mecca. This is like the place where, you know, you can do all these things and it, uh, I think for a lot of comics, it, um if you want to get serious about it, you should live in New York for a little while and mm-hmm. and just experience like you know because you can get up so much here you can get up like three four times a night or whatever but now there's not that many shows there's not that much stand-up there's like you know uh, people can get up on zoom shows and i know it's not the same thing but it's still like you're still kind of building a fan base that way you know um there's going to be like other kinds of 
other I, I feel it, it it this this whole thing has kind of broken the industry for New York. I mean, there's not going to be as many restaurants, right? There's not going to be as many bars. All these people like lost their jobs. They all have to they all have to go home. So I wonder, do you, we feel that like is it going to be the same once let's say we all get a vaccine? Is it all going to be the same? Are we all going to go and continue thinking like okay this is you know is new york still going to be the best place or is it do we think like maybe hey maybe you can uh start off in a smaller place and just stay there because like hey you don't have to go to the big city anymore there's no more no such thing i still think new york's gonna be the best place because it has a spirit a hustle spirit that no other city has like Mm. the fact that we're doing stand-up like outdoors we figured out this little loophole to get on stage (laughs) which is like yeah i don't uh and I mean, we're, it, I still think doing out, shows outdoors is like pretty safe. Like, yeah, you know, you're outdoors. That we the CDC said you can barely get Corona if uh, if you're outdoors. Like, we figured it out where like other mm. cities like didn't under. I don't think they have the mentality to like try to sneak shit in. <laughs> Or, uh, yeah, yeah. They're either yeah. going to follow rules, uh, or they're just not going to be as innovative as our city and our comedians have been. Where it's like, okay, let's just let's find a fucking amphitheater uh, and yeah. create a show there. I feel that's such a good point too, and and it's interesting because you're right. Being outside, I think, is the key. And if anyone has ever been to New York, New York you know there's no such thing as outside in New York City. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's like there's <laughs> like there's there's two parks. That's it, and they're full of people. And they you know there's a cover charge I think to get into Central Park now. <laughs> so it's amazing that you know it's, it's what's funny to me is that like we're all eating outside and, and restaurants are opening outside. And like in other towns, other cities, you can be outside and it's like pretty, you know, there's plenty of space. This, if, if the sidewalk isn't big, the parking lot is massive. But in New York City, it's like, I'm outside, there's a rat. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm outside, there's mm-hmm. like, you know, a motorcycle uh, uh, like show going on in the street next to me. And uh, I think it's funny that like if, of the places that decided to like figure out the outside thing. New York is a place that that tried to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I want to add one thing to that is like, uh, you know, there's this question of like, will New York be the same? Can you just be famous from fucking bumfuck Idaho? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you're doing some weird Twitter shit, maybe, but as I was at the QED show, what I completely forgot that there's a really important aspect of stand up that made you better specifically in New York is two things. One, Watching other comedians, mm. I forgot yes, that yes, I was like, yes. I was watching. watching other there comedians. were other there were other comedians on the show who were very funny, yeah, and they were cracking me up. I I, I watched the show, I watched the whole thing, because I I also just missed going to live events, right, and right, right, right. I, obviously, everybody's a little rusty, but there are these moments where they like really shine, and I'm like, oh, you yeah. still have it. That's yeah, such a yeah. funny fucking idea. Well, this is like this is this is what makes me better. Is I have to see this, you mm. know? Yes, that's so I true. I have to see this, and then the second part is the commute there and back. You're like you're, you're getting you're getting it. on stage. You're like, okay, is there something like last minute thing I can add to this? That's where I like, did a lot of my writing is in between shows and kind of like on your commuting there. And so when you take those two away, that that you know, it, it makes stand up a little harder to do. But I think that's those two reasons. Those two things are the reason why people come here, is because yeah, you could be in Ohio, but the people you're doing yeah. shows with, they're just they're just like they're just not gonna be as funny. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I don't know, man. What, Fumi, what do you, you don't have another live show? booked later no, on. No, but I, but I, I really, after that, I was like, I gotta make, you know, I I don't want to like, after that show, they're like, oh, we also have an open mic here tomorrow. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to come to the fucking open mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, slow I'm down. Like, uh, slow, like, your roll. slow down. Okay. I'm not, I'm not that thirsty, but and I, I, I don't want to hang at these shows either. But, but it made me think, think like, you know, we're all still here. The good comedians are still here. I think mm. it's kind of just up to us to create our own opportunity. So, like, I, I would love to do something while it's okay. still warm outside, whether that's a stand-up or whatever. And you know what? It it wasn't that bad, man. Like, it was – even we were talking into a stupid guitar amp, and it, it was super lo-fi. But, like, it's it felt so – real like you guys don't even know man like when you hold the mic bro that's yeah. like that's like that's like when the anime character like finds that mysterious sword or whatever you're like you King know Arthur. <laughs> yeah you're like <laughs> um, it's crazy man you pull it from a rock you know hey uh thanks for coming over kelly oh wow fumi oh, this is so nice that you have me over yeah um it's a tuesday night so i thought we could maybe get together and and do stuff. So oh, yes. This is uh. Let's, let's go into my room. 
I have a really big apartment. <laughs> <laughs> this apartment is so big. I wouldn't have ma- imagined it to be so big at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty. Su- I'm, a, I'm a pretty successful podcast. You should check it out. <laughs> I've heard. Yeah, so nice. Oh, we're still walking <laughs> so far. Okay, check it out. Uh, <laughs> now this is where the magic happens. Ooh, never heard that joke before. So yeah. fresh. You're so funny. Now, are you ready to get down and do the dirty on this bed? What do you think about this bed? <gasps> I've never seen a bed like this. It looks so nice and supportive. Yeah. Oh my we can do all the positions on this bed. Oh, my gosh. Including missionary? Including missionary. Fumi's favorite and only option. <laughs> what kind of... <laughs> where did you get this mattress from? This mattress is called Helix Sleep Mattress. Helix Sleep has a quiz that just takes two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Whether you're a side sleeper, hot sleeper, like a plush or firm bed with Helix, there's no more confusion and no more compromising on an average mattress. Helix Sleep was even awarded the number one bed overall mattress pick of 2019 by GQ and Wired Magazine. Just go to helixsleep.com slash Asian, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you up to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights free, risk-free, unlike what we're about to do right now, Kelly. Wink, wink. Helix is offering up to $125 off all mattress orders for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Asian. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X, sleep.com slash Asian for up to $125 off. Oh, you got a condom? Uh, we're moving on to race news. We haven't done race news in a minute, man. We haven't done race news in a minute. Uh, I'm excited about this one because people have been real excited about it. So, so Wilfred, I don't know if you heard about this, but uh, okay, headline reads, Professor asked student to anglicize her name. Oh, yeah. Uh, is put on leave. I didn't even know it was a her. Fuck. That's how, that's, that's how that tricky Vietnamese name was, name was. Wasn't her name Fuckboy? Okay. S- Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, I'm not blown up. Okay, this <laughs> says, <laughs> math- <laughs> Matthew Hubbard, a mathematics professor in Oakland, California, said his email to Fuckboy Diem, Nguyen, has, you can, Mike can correct the pronunciation, a Vietnamese American college freshman uh, were both a mistake and offensive. So there's a screenshot of this. Basically, this this professor emailed the student was like, hey, would you mind changing your name to something because Fuck boy or whatever her name is sounds like fuck boy. That's an insult in American culture, and he was like offended. And he said, "If I w-, he said something like, if I were in your country and my name Matthew Hubbard meant something offensive, I would change it." That was like his reason, and then it went viral, and now he's put on leave. Do you, uh, yeah, yeah, Mike, yeah. Do you know how to pronounce that properly? It's a uh, fuk, like so. It's a like a. It's more like a. It's a the long u. You know, so fuk, and then buoy mm. is uh, the name. So yeah, it, it's um. I think it's, it's a very tight name. And that's her it's first a tight name. name. That's a first name. Um, oh, shit. It is? And then Fook DM Bui. Nguyen. Yeah, and then, then you, it keeps going. So Fook Bui is, her, <laughs> is, her, is the first name of this person. So mm-hmm. uh, it's funny, too, because a, there's a couple of things. A, this is, uh, this is at De Anza College, which is in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. Which So it's like just perfect that this Vietnamese person is here. I'm surprised that this hasn't happened before. I sometimes forget that the Vietnamese language is a hilarious language, okay? Because <laughs> my uncle's name is Phuc, right? And for years, I didn't even realize that his name could be considered to be something bad because I was just like, mm-hmm. there's my asshole uncle Phuc, okay? There, you know, I didn't even think about his funny mm. name because I, I was just thinking about the guy himself. It, uh, like many Vietnamese names, Vietnamese names can be, are gender neutral, so Phuc could be a boy's name as well. So um, this is a this is a girl's name. So Phuc Bui is a is a girl's name. But and and I, I the, and the second layer is that this guy named Matthew Hubbard, who is a, prof, a math teacher or whatever at this school, <laughs> knows what fuck boy is. The, amazing, I love uh-huh. that. Uh-huh. Uh, and then I and then the last layer is that. Um, uh, uh, for a Vietnamese person, even if the name was Fuckboy, perfect name. Okay, that's that's a that's not even that's a description. Okay, yeah. that's it's, I, I, <laughs> that's not even you know like you you should be proud of that name. I I, I think it's a great name. I mean you know so um, I, I I I thought for me I was more surprised that this is the first time I've heard it because there is yeah that we have that name Fuck and it's. It's uh, it's it is a, it's hilarious. What can I say? You know, you know? what's surpri- you, what, what's surprising to me is that because every time someone says my last name, they try too hard. Like a white person says uh, my last name, they add too many like <laughs> syllables and like uh, accents on all the vowels. Like, I don't get why this guy didn't just do that so that because <laughs> if you just if you go lazy f- at it, it's fuck boy. But if you throw yeah, in all yeah. the all the yeah you, yeah you do too much work like all white people do. Uh, <laughs> It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it stops being fuckboy. 
Yeah, dude. Do just it. pretend that it's, you know, pretend that you're saying the word taco. Taco, you know? Okay, yeah. just throw it on there. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> mozzarella, you know? Like, it's too much spice on there. And then all of a sudden, it's not it's not a, not a bad word anymore. So, Wilfred, do you have a like a Filipino middle name or something like that? Or do Filipino people just have like regular ass uh, Spanish No, uh, my middle name is Anthony. So, it's like Wilfred. My grandpa's name was Wilfredo. My last name is Padua. Like, Wilfredo. Yeah. Wilfredo. <laughs> I never heard that of that. That is offensive. Okay, <laughs> That's offensive. Where I come from. <laughs> where I come from, okay, Olive Garden is a sacred place. Okay, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, my last name is Padua, which is a city in Italy. And uh, oh, wow. there's oh. a saint named Anthony of Padua. So that's where my middle name came from. I'm, my middle name is Anthony. Wow, I I def this when I read this. Okay, a couple of things I want to say about this. First of all, I I hate when 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 white people do this. It drives me crazy. They go, they did they do this at the border, right? Like sometimes my mom, I remember like my mom would like come back from Japan and we'd be in immigration and she can't really speak English, and the immigration officer would always be like, well, if I lived in your country, I would speak English. Like that that reason that logic. Yeah. Like he he did the same thing here. He's like, if oh, I was he in did, your country, he did that to your mom. Yeah, he. Yeah, oh my that's God. happened. That's happened multiple times. I've seen oh, that Jesus, happen wow. to my parents, and it's like fucking so annoying. But he did the same thing here. He's like, if I if I went to your country, and my name was offensive. I would change it. First of all, no, you fucking wouldn't. Second no, of all, wouldn't. your <laughs> name is offensive, man. Like a, a white name to you ruined their country. Yeah. It is Matthew is so offensive, dude. I mean, every any time I say I see a Matthew, I'm like, your name is now Fuckboy. Okay, that's it. You know? <laughs> Matthew, how dare yeah. you? How dare you come into my yeah. fall restaurant and talk about that? This um, also, I mean. Yeah. I mean, my name is Masa Fumi, so I've had a lot of this ha growing up because, like, Fumi, because Austin Powers oh, right, came yeah. out. And, oh, uh, yeah. Like, you remember <laughs> I the third know. one with Beyonce? The, what, was it Gold Member? Gold Member? Mm -hmm. Remember Austin yeah. Powers Gold Member? Yeah. So there's two, there's two Japanese girls. It's uh, so problematic, but there's two Japanese girls in the movie who, like, fuck Austin Powers, and their, name, their names are Fuck Me and Fuck You. Yeah, and, and the, Fukumi is an actual name, but Fukuyu is made up, and they're like <laughs> twins. They're, they're like hot, hot like Budweiser twins, but they're Japanese or whatever. And because of that, like my name, you know, F U M I, people thought that was like funny. And I remember like calling my friends' house, homes a couple of times to be like, "Hey, is Jeff home? Like, I want to play." This is when I was like in sixth grade. A couple of times, their mo their moms or their dads would think it's a prank call uh -huh. because I'm saying they're like, "Who is this?" And I say, "Oh, hi, this is Fumi." And they'd be like, okay. And they'd like hang up on me. Oh my like, God. That, that happened multiple times. And it was just like so frustrating. Just like, like, my, my I, kid would never have an ethnic friend. Quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that or like if my friend was like hanging out with me and their mom called and they're like, what are you doing? And my friend would say, I'm hanging out with Fumi. They'd be like, what's a Fumi? Like that happened what's constantly. <laughs> yeah. No, not so Fumi, me, foo you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I told, I totally, I totally feel for a uh, fuck boy. You know, you, I, I know what it's like to have, um, fuck in your name I, yeah dude what I, I yeah. used to work at like an international school which had it was just like all the richest asian kids uh like that their parents would send them to get an american education and it was just so funny all these like korean kids named like frank and al or whatever yeah <laughs> like, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you're 14 and korean and, and you don't know english at all uh but you chose frank <laughs> right right <laughs> fumi how, how, you never wanted to go with an american name like uh Whatever. I, no. I feel I feel like because like for Vietnamese people, we're kind of like half and half. Like I have a Vietnamese middle name and then we have I have like an English first name. But it's also because I'm Catholic and we're kind of like mm -hmm. Vietnamese people who got like became Catholic or like we're OK with being. Yeah, just call me David. I don't know the fuck. Um, and but then we all, a lot of us have Vietnamese <clears throat> Vietnamese middle names. But uh, for you, Fumi, you, you never like um, wanted to have like a you know you no know, john, because i was john, like john Abe. I, I think i don't You're know I don't, john but. I, I was pretty I, i've been told I've, I, I've been told that i'd make a good mic but i've never taken that what? name no <laughs> <laughs> if you go by mike i'm gonna go by by fuck me okay <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> I'm gonna go by fuck me. but i i, I just like I, I don't know why I, I never wanted one and i think it's because i felt that my name was fairly easy to pronounce especially after my friends gave me the nickname fumi I just I just thought it was like too, too easy to pronounce. So, right. Oh wait. Yeah. Oh sorry, I'm here. Yeah. Um. You know, and like my you know a lot of Japanese people have like two part names. Like their names are like Takafumi or something. So they'll go by Taka or whatever. So like, I and like a lot of people called my dad Hiro. His name is Hiroaki. Oh, that's so tight. So like I, I I like had seen <laughs> this pattern already. So I was like, oh, I guess that's just like what I'll do. So I never. Also, like I speak to my parents. I just, like, do your parents call you Mike? They call me. They call me Mike. Now, or Michael. They, when they were growing, well, yeah, Mike or Michael, yeah, yeah. 
They never called you Zooey? Your Vietnamese Zooey? name? Uh, no, they they did when I was growing up more. Yeah, yeah. My that's but my now, Vietnamese name. Yeah. The the thought because I don't even speak English, English with my parents. The thought of them calling me like Jonathan like made me want to throw up. Like, <laughs> like that's just that's so weird. That's like that's some weird incest shit. I don't want to do it. You know. So that's I like. Yeah, I like stayed away from it, but. I don't know. You guys can give me an English name right now if you want to. Yeah, you're like Toby and uh, and Ritz. Toby. <laughs> yes, you're a Toby. Yeah. Yes, but that's yes, you're, like, you're my definitely name a Toby. Is Fumi. <laughs> 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 well, thank you very much to our guest Wilfred Padua for being on this show. Thanks uh, for this having me. This is incredible. Me, um, we're going to book you again one day. It'll be a couple of years from now when we're at the next level. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we look back and we're like, who should we bring with us? You know? Yeah, who should but, we um, help out? <laughs> who should we help out? Um, but, uh, Wilfred, where can our friends uh, on the podcast find you? I'm at Wilfred Paddle on everything. Uh, I'm assuming you'll be spelling out my name. Uh, oh, you're killing it on TikTok. Oh, shit, I forgot. Oh, yeah, get about your that. TikTok, bro. Yeah, it's the same. How's I'm, your TikTok going? I want to hear more I about haven't it. Posted, I just looked at it. Uh, I haven't posted since May 14th, uh, and it, the numbers are starting to slow down, but I think I'm going to get back on it and start figuring out how to post new videos. You you uh, had like you had a bunch of, for, like your first five, didn't you have like 300,000 views in your first couple or something like that? Or you had one with like a million or something? I have, What's your... I have one with 1. 1.4 on it. Oh, um, shit. Yeah. And it's... And it, it also... Because it's like a... It's a joke about like uh, black dudes and how they get arrested mm. so quickly. Like uh, that... Uh, <laughs> that... It, it got a Great resurgence title. with the black... Wow, black really? Yeah. So wow. I had like another like 3,000 followers just pop up because of that. Um, but yeah, I don't... It's going fine. I don't know. I, I stopped caring about it, but I think now that I've got a, a potential headlining weekend, I got to start. Uh, I'm going to figure out oh, how, put him back how up. to use that, those numbers to advertise for my show. That's, uh, that's, the, yeah. that's the crazy thing is like when I was up there doing the show, I was only doing eight minutes, but it felt like a pretty long time. And then I'm supposed to do a college show in October. I'm like, how am I going to fucking do 45 minutes? Really? Like, yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. I'm like, I don't, because I don't have any live uh, gigs booked. And I'm like, fuck, I'm going to have to do 45 with, with having yeah. taken five months off. You oh have to like gosh. practice in front of a mirror or something, you know? What did you say? <laughs> you have to practice in front of a mirror or something. Oh, yeah. I did a, a half hour on Zoom and I was like, what are these jokes? And it was the first time I was like nervous. Like, you remember like the first couple times you did stand up where you're like reciting oh, yeah. the jokes to yourself yeah 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 it was the first time i've like had to say jokes to myself in my kitchen in years <laughs> you're, you're 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 like uh you're like b rabbit from uh you know eight mile just in the mirror oh, yeah. looking in the mirror just like <laughs> yeah yeah you know filipinos <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah i threw up on my shirt <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! All right. As always, you can find us on the social media at Asian Not Asian Pod. I'm also on all platforms at the Fumi Abe T H E F U M I A B E. And you can find me on Instagram at Nice Pants Bro. Please come to our Zoom comedy show. They're not as good as real life ones, but still come every Friday, good, 8 p.m. Though, Eastern. Man. They're fun. fun. They're fun. No, they're fun. They're fun. I, I, ours is the best for sure. It's the best Zoom. Sh- it's the best Zoom show out there. So please come. Uh, just go to Asian Not Asian Pod dot com for tickets. It's free. Tell your friends. And um, oh, if you want to uh, support us on Patreon, if you want to give us your money, go to patreon.com slash a- oh, sorry, patreon.com slash Asian not Asian pod. You have to type in the link exactly because uh, we're adult content or something like that, so you can't search for us. Mm. But we got bonus content Sexy on there. Content. If you donate money, <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we uh, we guess your name, we guess your ethnicity based on your last name. So it's a good time. So please, uh, please do that. Please give us your money, man. And uh, I think that's it, Mike. Right. I think that's it. Let's all hang out. Um, I, uh, you know, let's 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 deepen these friendships. Okay, that's what this is all about. Yeah, <laughs> we're boys. We're, officially we're boys. boys. We're boys. Gosh. All right. uh, so th- I've, uh, this is uh, once again thank you to Wilfred. I'm Mike, and this is Toby. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>